My name is Dr. Stephen Conti. I'm an orthopedic foot and ankle surgeon. That means I went to medical school. I did a residency program at the Hospital for Joint Diseases in Manhattan, New York, and then followed that with a one-year fellowship for orthopedic foot and ankle care at the Center for Orthopedic Care in Cincinnati, Ohio. I've been in practice for over 25 years, and my predominant responsibility is patient care, but I also enjoy teaching, and I have quite a bit of research that I've done. This video is about bunions. Bunions are a misalignment of the great toe. Now, bunion in Latin actually means turnip, which refers to the prominence that people see on their big toe. But you have to understand that is not extra bone. That's a misalignment of the great toe joint. And it's because of that misalignment that patients get symptoms. Their symptoms range from the cosmetic problems we all recognize but no one wants to talk about, to the shoe fit problems that everyone has issues with, but really it comes down to misalignment over a long run leads to arthritis. The arthritis leads to pain, and that is our newest concept of what a bunion is. For years, we told people just to get into a wider shoe, but the reality is that the joint is misaligned, and so picture that your kneecap was sitting on the side of your knee, or your shoulder would pop in and out of place, wouldn't those joints become arthritic? The treatment for bunion is dramatically different nowadays than it was even five years ago. And the reason is because our concept of bunion has changed. So if we believe that a bunion is a misaligned joint that's becoming arthritic with each step, then you can understand how taking pressure off the bump with a wider shoe is not really gonna change your long-term outcome nor is the bunion splint that you buy in the magazine, which pulls the toe over but doesn't realign those little sesamoid bones. And so while we don't treat bunions that don't hurt, because we can't make it any better than not hurting, any bunion that becomes consistently sore is a candidate for surgical treatment. If you no longer have any cartilage in your joint and I can't give that back to you, right? I can't cure your arthritis, then we go to surgery and we realign you at that point, but you still have no cartilage and so you still hurt. So the new treatment paradigm is to treat bunions early, get them evaluated early, understand what you have, and then really to surgically realign them. Well, early intervention is the key term nowadays for bunions. And it doesn't mean you have to have surgery just because you have a bunion, but you have to come into the office we have to go through what you have, we have to make you understand what you have, and then make you understand the triggers that would lead to further care. Initially, of course, high-heeled narrow shoes are just out of the question because they are contributing to your deformity, which is contributing to your misalignment, which is contributing to your arthritis. Surgery is reserved for those people that have consistent symptoms developing in their bunion, but the absolute key is not to wait until your bunions are killing you. So two things happen when you don't treat your bunion. The first is what we've talked about, which is where the first toe joint gets out of position and the sesamoid bones get arthritic. But the second thing that we've noticed from our recent research is that not only does the first metatarsal move out, but it also moves up and rotates that shifts pressure off the first metatarsal over to the second metatarsal, and that will ultimately cause rupture of the ligament. So people call it a hammer toe, but it's really a crossover toe. And then the pressure can come further back to the middle of the foot where it will lead to midfoot arthritis. But this is one of those diseases where early recognition of the bunion early discussion, and sometimes non-surgical care is key. Surgery for bunions is evolving with our understanding of bunions. And so now that we don't think it's just a lump, we go to realign the bone. And that almost always involves cutting the bone in some way or fashion. If we cut a bone, we've created a fracture that we then need six to eight weeks to heal. Now all the surgery is done under sedation, like twilight sleep, plus what's called regional anesthesia. So the anesthesiologists have gotten great at numbing the patients from the knee down. So when you wake up, you have no pain, and often those blocks will last one to three days, 
which gets you home, gets you comfortable, gets you on some of the narcotic pain medicine. So when the block wears off, it's not painful. So again, another misconception is if you know a patient who had a bunion surgery five or six or more years ago, they probably didn't have regional anesthesia. Nowadays, bunion surgery is really minimally uncomfortable. So recovery from bunions takes about six to eight weeks for the bone cut we make to heal. We ask patients to elevate for a week to 10 days because the foot's had surgery, it's going to swell. And then they can immediately put weight on their foot on the heel in the post-op shoe. After about six or eight weeks, they begin to weight bear, but patients just have to understand it may be three or four months until they're in a shoe fully doing their activities and up to one year until they're fully recovered.